This podcast is rated R for restricted. Under 17 requires a company, parent, or adult guardian. Mission to 15. Guys, guess what we just did? Uh, what did we do? We watched yet another movie, but this one is a milestone. We watched 325, sorry, 225. It's the name of the podcast. I should be able to do this math. Yeah, it's okay. 225 movies Might explain from things. the top 250 best movies of all time list. That's I think right. this is the 325th. Could be the sixth. I don't know how to do. Could be the fourth. This is the twenty fifth. I mean, we don't know what we're doing. Right. Here. We threw, we threw <laughs> like, we you threw can keep a saying numbers yeah, if you want. I know. Yeah, we still never yeah. watched the Batman, the second uh, Christian Nolan Batman movie film. Yeah, but we, we jumped we, ahead and watched the two Star Wars movies that are I, still above I know, us. I know. So I know. it's kind of so, balancing it out yeah, there. That's fair. Yep. And I'm going to recommend that we skip next week's movie for a while. Because of reasons we can get into later. All right, but Let's this week we're well, watching. Well, 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 hold on, it's a Christmas what movie. movie and it's next the oh, beginning Jesus. of spring. It doesn't really seem oh, well, appropriate. No, 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 thanks. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. <laughs> uh, so yeah, twenty fifth best mo- movie of all time. The Usual Suspects, released in nineteen ninety six. This movie, John, we should probably have gotten uh, your little movement tracker because this movie has been dropping mm. for reasons can... that we can get into. Uh, I'm sure we, yeah. we, we can. I don't think it has anything to do with the movie itself, yeah. but, but the people well, surrounding it might. the movie. It Aww. might. Yeah. Well, it's my turn to go yeah. first. That's good, because I'm going to go totally yeah, positive on this we, one. We can't no. say, also, I will say this is one film, if you're interested, and haven't seen it, it it's a great uh, plot. It, 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 it's won the Academy Award for Best Original Screenplay, and there, if you like sort of twists, then that's nice. I, I, I could be I considered say. the best yeah. twist ever in movie history. This movie has some questionable acting, but I think everything they do is hilarious. Like if it's bad, it's awesome. Like every character is memorable. I know every character's name, first and last name in this movie. That Dude. doesn't happen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You got verbal kit. You got I D don't. Keaton. Yeah. I know. Uh, Kaiser Soze. Uh, I mean, what a freaking I mean, memorable good name, name there. Edie yeah. Finnerin, come on, yep. she's not even on the screen that much. Nope. I know that name, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, I've, this movie. I was introduced to this like when I was a uh, freshman in high school. I remember it because we had like this nerd movie nerd in our dormitory, and he just showed us all these these movies. This was one of them, uh, you know, alongside like Clockwork Orange, where these two were the kind that stuck with me, being like, "Wow, movies can be sweet." Mm-hmm. My parents haven't showed me these because they're kind of probably too violent for a twelve year old. Um, but I, was, I haven't seen it in a while. I was kind of afraid I was going to go back and watch it and, you know, it wasn't going to be as good. But I was laughing Which quite a bit at this movie. Yeah, I, I don't... That sucks. I thought this movie was hilarious. Yeah. I thought the acting... It is surprising that Kevin Spacey won Best Supporting Actor because I didn't think he was that good I of, like, a regular actor. Because yeah. he's been a lot better in other stuff, like in uh, LA Confidential or um, Seven yeah. or American Beauty. Like, he's just better... This movie is memorable, but he's kind of bad. But it's it's really entertaining to watch him. Yeah, and he really his like um, his narration about the story and the characters is like very highly entertaining. There isn't like a second of this it movie was. where I'm just like bored or not caring about what's going on. Like yeah. it moves at a really brisk pace, and it's always like interesting. Like I know what's going to happen at the end, but it's still fun to watch all these characters who I like all of them even though they're like murderers right you know they they still come across as like and they're all fun and they're all doomed. guys to hang out with yeah right. I mean, you know they're all going to die yeah right. um, if you've watched it before have you right. seen, did you seen this before tc i had yeah, yeah when i was okay. much younger yeah. no no yeah. that's why this is i yeah. i sorry i always kick him in the spoiler things so we don't always do it justice <laughs> this is one of those films yeah true but spoilers, I guess. This movie's old. I don't know. Yeah, Do you need spoilers yeah. for yeah. movies that are I don't are think you need spoilers for movies that have been out for years you know, yeah. 20 years. Yeah. yeah. But good call. Can't be too safe, I guess, these days. Who right. knows? Um, That's true. But, I mean, even seeing it coming, it's kind of dumb. Like, there's only, you know, there's probably three things, four or five things that he says that actually they show you. Mm-hmm. Like, all the editing towards the end is really good because the first time you watch it, you're assuming that every single thing on the board he's using to lie to this guy. Right. But really, it's just the bullshit story he didn't need to tell about the barbershop quartet. Right, right, right. The picture of the fat lady where he says Orca fat, also not necessary for the plot. He steals the name Redfoot, which, 
who cares? Right. He steals right. the coffee cup. Kobayashi also doesn't matter. And then was there anything else even? I don't know. I, there's there's like it was tiny things. writing. I didn't. Maybe there's more that uh, we just yeah, didn't I wasn't see. Really, yeah, yeah, I wasn't really tracking but that part. As a younger person, <laughs> I, I totally fell for it. I wasn't like... Oh yeah, tracking how much, like what number and what they were. It kind of really gets across, at least in the fr- first viewing, that he's just lying to him the entire time, and you don't know at all what part of the story right. is true. Um, and the fact, I mean, there's a lot of. I kind of want to go through the plot to see what his motivations are because I can't fully wrap my head around why, at the very least, he would s- talk to this guy at all. Like, why is he talking to Agent Kulian? I don't know. It doesn't make any sense because spoilers. He's Kaiser Soze, mm-hmm. and he's just like risking getting caught. Is he? Or I by, mean, he, he was. He there, almost he, got caught. Yeah, he's in the freaking he, place he for there. like oh half an hour That's longer because right. he didn't do a good job at killing everybody on the boat. There was a freaking witness there that. Well, knew he, he I think like. at least for a while it made it look like he was he was trying to make it look look as though um, uh, Dean or um, Dean Keaton. Keaton like that was his purpose. His purpose was to be there, to be reluctant, and to set up Dean Keaton for the whole thing. And that, that's what I kind of thought was going on. That his, his, but he couldn't have predicted that the freaking Gus Fring from Breaking Bad was going to come in with the information <laughs> from Kaiser Sose. No, no. Like, I know. there's no way he could have predicted uh, maybe, this. So you could also just uh, say that you know, this guy is... These it, series of events he's, doesn't he, make any he's sense. Like, the other thing is he's proud of himself. He's proud of how he set all this stuff up. He's feeling pretty good. He's about to disappear forever. So he's enjoying this. Um, and that, that's the thing I don't get, I though. Know. He's supposed to be so good, but there are so many factors I, that seem to be I, out of I, his I control. Know, so, like, he's not that good. And it kind of like reduces his character right. a bit, being that, like, this guy fair. isn't some like genius mastermind. He's just like a cocky murderer, is all he is. Kind well, of, he, you know, if you no, think about it, it, it ruins the, the, it can a little, know, yeah. the myth about yeah, him. Yeah. I think, I think it, I, I, you know, when you see this again, it definitely. Uh, knowing what's going to happen, then you can pay attention and sort of see, pick things apart a bit more. Um, but yeah. But what I did this time too, is I turned the subtitles on and oh, yeah. I realized that I had been missing quite a bit of dialogue. Oh. I'm watching <laughs> really? this just on VHS. Yeah. Uh, dude, I can't understand like Fenster. Well, can't understand Fenster. Fucking I mean, that's, by, yeah, that's I mean, my design though. <laughs> <Benicio> <laughs> like, I know. It makes friggin' no, no he, sense. That was one of my favorite now. lines now. I had no idea what it was, yeah. but he was just like, he's a, uh, He's a peerless psycho, <laughs> fucked up butcher. <laughs> You're like, yeah. oh, that's what he's saying. He's talking oh, about Kaiser Sose. Okay. I thought he was okay. just mumbling to himself. But he said specifically yeah. that he thought his character was boring. So he did this to make his character more interesting, which is totally true because his character didn't have too much else to do. So mm-hmm. it was actually a brilliant turn on his part to decide, okay, well, I'm just going to mumble and no one's going to understand I couldn't me. tell if he was like, uh, you know, slow no. or if he was... I mean, he's just, no, he wasn't because Kevin Spacey told you during the little character introductions yeah. that he's a very smart man. Yeah. So you got to listen to Kevin Spacey when he that tells you, fair. right? Uh, very yes. important. Anyway. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I, get, I mean, yeah. I, I wasn't paying attention that closely. I had a hard time with this one. Oh, it sucks. Uh, I just I didn't like, remember oh. it being so bad. Oh. Uh, well, bad, um, bad how? Like everybody being just bad. Bad at acting? You know, like Baldwin is just... Oh, miserable, <laughs> but he's entertaining. And, Holy no, shit! But he's so awful. He's entertaining, thinking and he's like the I leading sexy I, guy. I'm with you. I'm with you, though, Denny. That I I really didn't find Kevin Spacey that good, that great. Um, you know, I think I had a an because image he was of him my from friend. A, yeah, shut oh up, Kevin. God, that was shut awful. up, Kevin. <laughs> Another um, take, please. Come on, let's do it. I know. There's got to be more. Um, yeah, I don't know. I had a hard time paying attention. It was just not. It just was so over the top stupid. And like, you know, a lot of it was contrived. Like, oh, it just happens to say the name that just happens to bring the detective who just happens. Right. Like nothing. No decisions are being made. And then they, you know, have exposition for almost four or five minutes sometimes with some Mm. of the characters. And you're just like, I don't care about this anymore. And when I was younger, I remember Danny thinking, this is awesome. (laughs) Yep. <laughs> and then, so I was actually kind of excited to watch it again because I'm thinking to myself, man, I, I actually really remember liking this one. And I think at the end, when it wrapped up, I was like, that's why I liked this one because the mm-hmm. ending is friggin' awesome. Yep. It's one of the better editing endings in a movie that I've ever seen. Well, the problem was is that I had to watch the whole thing first. So like, <laughs> I just remember feeling like, but I just wasted so much time mm-hmm. with it. 
Um, so that was a little upsetting because I do remember enjoying it when I was a kid. And, I, you know, I will give the credit of the ending because it absolutely deserves it. I mean, it's almost like one of those situations where it seems like you wrote it and that's where it started when you were starting the writing process. Yeah, like, that's, we that's a great the idea for the ending. Opposite, the complete yeah. opposite of what happened in oh, this wow. movie. Oh, yeah. wow. Really? Yeah. That's they awesome. They started with the poster. I, literally, this movie came from an idea to have a lineup of five guys, and they created the poster before they wrote anything down on paper. Cool. That's awesome. It's bizarre. Okay, now that now the the story is better than the movie. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I... I don't think I would watch this one again. Oh, put it that I, way. I this movie is uh, it's weird because it's kind of it's uh, it's so weirdly on the fence of like great fantastic bad movie and also kind of really really good good movie but like flawed in a lot of mm-hmm. ways cuz like I thought the the music was awesome and I was like, damn, they don't really make movies like this anymore because the music went so well with the edit and that's because the editor and the composer same fucking person. Mm. Genius. Uh, wow. And there's so many go. moments where it doesn't like, usually yeah, work right. out. The score right. is really, really, really good. I, I agree. Yeah, I was the score and that. the way it goes with the edit yep. is so good. And like, even especially at the end with that cut to back to um, Verbal Kent when he's like, he's gone. And yeah. then the music goes, yeah. and then mm-hmm. continues yeah. on. You're like, fuck yeah. yeah, that's so good. Yeah. No, it's I perfect. will say that was great. And, you know, there's lots of talent in this one, but. Some, it just, I, I thought know, the cinematography was awesome throughout. It was Baldwin, interesting man. all the time. Yep. The music, like even before that, was just by itself great. There's the there's like wood blocks and like strumming and some like ambient tension music, which is pretty simple, but it seems unique in some way. Like you don't hear a lot of like wood block being used for tension very much, and it works really well. If it's well. not like a kung fu movie, right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. It kind of was a little kung fu y there. Yeah, uh, I liked all that. I thought all the acting was great. It was definitely over the top, not realistic, but every character it's style, is memorable. Stylish, and, and I don't it know. It was stylish. I, I think I that this is like I think you guys were saying this too, yeah. and watching this younger. This was and similar to what you said too, Denny. I think this is the first time I really saw a film, uh, uh, like I saw a movie, and and appreciated the style of it, like like the way it looked and the way the characters looked, and thought it was just really cool. For, mm-hmm. And hadn't it had a pulp fiction? Hadn't really it. seen a film like that before. Either. This movie got blamed for ripping off Pulp Fiction because it came out a year afterwards, no. but this one was actually started filming before Pulp Fiction started filming. It just took a year after it was done to get out to the theaters. No. So it was just uh, So just like the people were, were like, hey, this, this doesn't the, seem right. Yeah. Or like, was it, the, was it the industry? It was the industry. I think it was because oh, Pulp was Fiction industry. made waves, and then this one also made waves. And you're like, hey, it's just a stylistic, mm-hmm. violent movie. It's right, the same thing. Right, and you're like, right, eh, it's not right. the same nah. thing. No, it's not. They're very different. Yeah. But yeah. But they're both in the top twenty-five IMDb best movies of all time, and Quentin well, Tarantino is unless it's dropping because well because of Brian Singer and Kevin Spacey's sexual allegations against raping seventeen-year-old boys. But that doesn't have anything to do with the movie. But, um, yeah, just just <laughs> constantly being at the very least in the wrong place at the wrong time a whole lot of times. Yeah. The funny thing is, what there I'm are no coincidences. Is I don't give a shit if. Movies, I mean, I, it is bad. I I don't know how to say this correctly. I'm annoyed by Woody Allen is what I'm realizing. Well, it's not that I think what he did was bad. It's that I'm annoyed him by his character. In, you in just him. don't <laughs> like Woody Allen. Yeah. Yeah. That's mostly what it is. This is just, yeah. You had Leighton, right. Woody Allen Because if hate. it's not Woody Allen, <laughs> yeah. you don't seem if to I'm get outraged If I'm watching Kevin Spacey in American Beauty uh, and Usual Suspects, and I'm not pissed the entire time, there's something different. You're not even thinking about how disgusting he might have been. I hate you so much for that, Denny. I'm sorry. I'm just telling the truth. I had such a painful time when we did the Woody Allen stuff because I like those films and I totally had to come around to seeing how bad it is. I mean, these, this but it was is, just because he's annoying in those movies. Yeah, that's all it, it was. It all just, you just had latent hatred that you just wanted to vent. It, that's how like racism works. It you, wasn't latent. Wood, I never Woody, watched any Woody, Woody Allen. Allen. though, but it's just there you want, you, you're yeah. waiting to hate Woody Allen. It's like you're <laughs> racist, but you're, it's just about Woody uh. Allen. <laughs> It's the Woody Allen's <laughs> fault. It's always his fault. <laughs> I knew he was a pervert. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, well, I'm yeah. glad well, we, now that we got that yeah, out of the way. Yeah. That's all we need to talk yeah. about, the, the bad things that these creators did. You can, make, you know, it's not, outside the, of making the, this movie. This film, say, unlike The Professional, it, it's 
you know, they're not making a comment on uh, love, romance, relationships, or sex, or anything in this film. There's nothing like that. So you just a bunch of cool dudes hanging yeah, out and yeah. doing crime together. Yeah, right. That's right. That's right. There's a bunch of exactly what I was <laughs> That's thinking. Right. Yeah. <laughs> just the guys it's like a buddy cop movie, but out. it's a buddy crime yeah, movie, yeah. and there's like six of them. Yeah, I guess there's yeah, five. Yeah, right. Yeah, and they're but all like, dramatic. Yeah, all but even them. like Agent Kuyan likes. There's a couple things where Kevin Spacey's telling him about Kaiser Sose, yeah. and the detective is like smiling. He's like, "Yeah, yeah. I like this verbal yeah, kid guy. We're buddies. This guy's sick. The yeah. guy killed this kid. Sweet, go on. This is my kind of yeah. story. That's right. Yeah, uh, and he gets away with all that weird stuff pretty easily because for some reason it's you know lots of people die. There's lots of blood and stuff, but it comes across as pretty light. And because I think it's stylized, I, it's just it, it, it's, it's like not it's like a comic. Heavy. Book. It feels like a comic book. Like a pulp. Like like that's what Pulp Fiction kind of felt like that too. Although. That violence was was more hard that hitting. It was a little I more realistic. Yeah, that yeah, it, more it, like it, a, it was more hard hitting. But this this does feel more like a I don't know. It's like a comic book. Yeah, you're right. It doesn't feel. It yeah, that's that's good. But I also I mean yeah. I remember when I was little, much younger, watching this. I was sad for those guys though too. I thought they were cool. I didn't oh, want really? them to die. I, I yeah, Dean Keaton. You know, he's trying to be good, but they just you know he can't. Anyway, I don't know. <laughs> didn't want to shoot that he's guy. He's such an emo. Dean Keaton is so emo. I, I didn't realize it, it, that it as a kid. He's just a oh. mopey dude. He, he is. You recognize yeah, yeah. him as the father from Hereditary. Yeah. I didn't he know. Was a, yeah. I mean, he's, he's, been, he's a lot, been pretty but, popular. Yeah. He was in Miller's Crossing and stuff. Yeah. And stuff. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, oh, Miller's Crossing would be good. You need some more Coen brothers. Haven't good. done that for a while. They're making a horror movie. That's the rumor. Is it now? Interesting. That's okay. That's pretty good stuff. Um, if, it's good yeah. news for me. Uh, what else can I say good about this movie? It's still funny. This movie is kind of a comedy. This, there's a few scenes that are just like anytime Fenster's talking, it's pretty funny. It's funny. Anytime Billy Baldwin is really mad, I found that pretty damn funny. Whenever Kel- Kevin so Pollock was bad. like irritating oh. his his uh, Billy Baldwin character, I was laughing at that. Uh, oh, the yeah. scene in, in the lineup that was good. Yep, like there's just a lot of scenes that were pretty good. good character actors, funny. otherwise Baldwin's. So like he, he, I wonder if he really thinks he's that sexy or something. But <laughs> so. he does. I think he Kevin does. Pollock hated yeah. him. Oh really? Afterwards, yeah. there's like some special okay. features where they're basically they're being interviewed separately and they're talking shit about each other and they edited <laughs> it to, to make it seem like they were just fighting each other. That's nice. But Kevin Pollock hated Billy Baldwin. Oh. Uh, and I mean. Look at him. He apparently wore, like, the thing that he said at the end. He's just like, dude, stop wearing leather pants. You're not a rock star, okay? <laughs> I know. I know. Honestly. I'm tired of, but it worked for the character. I thought he was walk, great. Man. <laughs> yeah, uh, for a character, though, I thought it was, like, perfect. Mm-hmm. He seemed like an annoying, high-energy right. t- type of person. But it seemed like this is really who he is. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> for sure. It's annoying. Did it they all kind of seem that way, yeah, except for yeah. Kevin Spacey, who was doing something weird. But. Well, it seemed with the Spacey stuff too. It also seemed like I don't know they shot it out of order because it just feels like his he's like all terrified and afraid, or he's all excited, and 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 it's all about some of the same. Like talking about Kaiser Sose, like it, it's just strange. It's so all over the place. Like he's being like dramatic performance. I'm dramatically sad. I'm dramatically scared. Now I'm dramatically excited. And it's again, it's not. It's entertaining. It is. It is. It still is interesting. It, it's kind of fun to it watch. It could be considered bad, but I it think. could be considered bad, and uh-huh. it do, it does not feel. It feels like out of sequence. It fits. It, it's confusing. It, it's it's like it, if if you. Oh, that's the opposite it, of what Josh yeah, said. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Here we go, exactly. The it does not <laughs> fit. exactly, but exactly. Not exactly. I think it fits. Any I events? think what, what? Yeah, I mean, the bad acting fits in the movie. I think I it works so, pretty well. Right, in that he's yeah, I don't know, but but it, it, it's a bit strange. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, when he opens up the back of the truck and he's just sitting there with the gun, yeah. all stupid. <laughs> yeah, good thing like, he's wearing a mask. So they can't tell who that guy is. Stupid. <laughs> this is this movie is useless no. as far as like saying anything. No. It's just entertaining. It is. It's totally. stylishly done in a lot. A lot of the I really like, I like the intro sequence of following the lights on the water. Is it great? Did you notice intro? that was repeated? Oh no no! They, one of, they one of the commentary it? tracks, they looped the. Uh, they didn't have enough footage to keep panning it. Oh, so that was I didn't looped. notice. No, yeah, it's all. They all looked blended the same. pretty well. So I wanted to see if we could quickly run down what happens in the plot, what we're told, and then try to see what the actual, what actually happened, and why the fuck Kaiser Soze I don't know. Uh, slash I mean, verbal kint 
I guess you're going to say you don't think it matters, but uh, I want to go through because right. I think exactly it's, I it's made. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because you always do. But we're going to uh, ignore you and just continue on. Okay, right, right. So we'll do this. Yeah. And, Noted. You know, that's, yeah. This movie is watched over and over again, right? And there is like people By like who? the twist because I don't know. It's still on the list, right? Well, it's, it's, it's somebody's got to be it's watching. It's a really it. fun. Uh, yeah. The twist is a really fun double punch where you you, you get like. You get a reveal that it's Keaton thinking that it's Keaton and the the movie builds to make you think that that's what's happening and showing the sequences like, like, oh, now we know what really happened there. And isn't that interesting that it was Keaton that masterminded the whole thing? But um, it was also the intent of the script to get people to go watch it again and again because yeah. they wanted people to, you know, now that they knew one of the main characters was Kaiser Soze, to right. watch it again right, and right. see how that played yeah, out. Yeah, sure. And not only was it intent, but that's how it played out because lots of people watched this when it was coming out in theaters, they right. like went and saw it repeated times because yeah, it's fun. And then you want to, you know, it's like a different experience watching it, knowing what happens at the end. So huh. that's why people watch it again. So it was made to live up to scrutiny of trying to figure out like what a motivation would be, right? It's something they thought about right? and whether or not it actually exists. The movie's confusing enough where even watching it for probably, I don't know, I've watched this over five times it's been a while, but I used to watch it a bunch when I was like an early teenager. Um, it's still, I don't see any glaring flaws in the plot, right? It's just yeah. like, there's too much going on right. to like point at something. And so what happens in the movie is they get put up in lockup together because a van full of guns gets stolen. That's how they all meet. There's a little, uh, Dean Keaton vouches for verbal Kent because he met him two years ago as verbal Kent. So at Kaiser Sose has been pretending to be the uh, verbal Kent for at least two years. And I think they met up, uh, in prison so he put himself in prison to become friends with dean keaton because just skipping to the end Again, he knew so eventually he was going to have to have these five people because he knew this but, one witness was going to be on a boat at least two years in the future where he needed to go and kill him but 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 that doesn't, this, I mean, is, this is all this is all <laughs> verbals retelling though so any of this could be not true he it, it be keen, uh, maybe Keaton vouched for him, but he didn't have to say he's known him for four years. But Verbal might want the agent to know that to make it more credible that that Verbal is Verbal and has been Verbal a long time. You, you could just say that none. So of, do you none think Verbal this... was even Verbal to the, those guys, or was he just making up Verbal for the uh, the police? Nah, I, that would be interesting. I don't know. It'd be all we have is his retelling of the events. We're not hearing yeah, anybody and else's. I think that's. So, the so, plot is so him means, getting through because we hear the narrator, right? Right. So the narrator is him telling the story. So the mm -hmm. plot really becomes him getting caught, going into the police station, getting having to have this story told, and then the premise action is like the general, you know, concept of this thing that's going on with all these characters, right. and that's what makes it cool. The premise is really cool because it's six con artists that are going to be criminals, right, and do bad things. But really the only plot in the story that what I can see is the situation that he's in and his telling of the story and how he has to tell the story a certain way in order to get the cop to go off his back. But the cool parts of the story is that weird little world that doesn't really have a story. I may not exist. <laughs> it may not exist. And it, 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 it may not exist. Did, right? Did they... Edit in so 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 oh, okay. so sorry. Quick, if, if it's a quick question, John, go for it because I want to. It may not be it, well. I, it may not be quick. It, it remind me to get back to it though. Like some okay. stuff at the beginning of the R film. Write it down. So no, I'm writing it down. So what you know? What happens in the movie? So they get the lockup. They they do a heist. They right. go and they bust the cops. And I have to assume that busting the cops with that um, escort service actually happened because they would have been able to check on that, right? Sure. To see if they were actually corrupt cops in the city that they work in. That's something they would have known about. Yeah. So that must have happened. Um, and they might not have done it. He might have just been taking credit for that heist right. with their but, group. It might have been somebody else. They right. don't. They never caught the guys who did it. So he could have just been linking then, that. Then but like that how, event happened at right. least. But then how is it that's also then the fence is located in L.A., so they have to – they um you know, Baldwin boy was going to just go by himself, but then Keaton's not going to allow that. He's right? going to bring his little buddy. Oh, yeah, Baldwin. Bring, Baldwin boy brings Baldwin Fenster, boy. yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> um, but he's going to bring Fenster, so, but then, uh, again, the whole group happens to decide not to let that happen. Now, that again, another another big Because why would you trust Billy Baldwin? The guy's a psycho. Yeah, I know. Can't but, trust that guy. But, like, is this all planned? You know, was that... So, supposedly, you did... Was... Um, Kaiser so say wanting this first job to happen with the police did he then want this to them subsequently to move get out to the coast 
because that's where the ship is. So again, is this all his master? It doesn't because they needed they needed uh, in, Redfoot was the path to Kobayashi, who was the path right, to right, Kaiser right, Sose, right, right. right? So they needed to get to Redfoot at some point. Yep. Why couldn't Kobayashi just have come by directly by himself? I guess. Yeah, like none of the stuff before mm. that he had them all dead to rights. Supposedly, right, 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 right. He when had they them were all, all stealing from yeah, them. Yeah, nothing that we saw in the movie actually like uh, mattered for the no, Kobayashi right. storyline. He, he could have just showed up at any time because look at what he has on all of them, right? Mm-hmm. And then and just basically gotten them. So there would be no, there's no reason for the lineup, no reason for those people to be brought together all at once. Well, they they did say that it was it's hard to get those guys together, and the way they got them together was yeah, that lineup, right? But they didn't have, you know, I, I guess after the lineup, but they could have got them all together. I don't know. Like you, you know, you know, Kobe, <laughs> if, they, if, if Kobe Kobe Ashi wasn't in the group, in, then they could have right, just done he, crime he, together. He, but he yeah. was in the group, right, Kobe Ashi, so he could have stopped it or something. Kobe Ashi he actually had the plan. Could have invited. He could have invited them all to a warehouse and presented them with their folders, and nothing else needed to have happened to convince them to work with each other. Um, apparently they wouldn't have come to the warehouse is what well, they were trying and to maybe, get at. Maybe, though, again, this is the grandmaster plan is like, no, we need to get these guys. We need to get them some experience. They need to bond and stuff like that. So we're going to give them a small job. Let's give them something in New York where they are, but something that will put a lot of heat on them and find a reason that they have to get out of New York to L.A. And then we once we figure, get that, then we're going to have that job go south where they're going to end up shooting the jewel thief. So then they're really feeling some pressure which and, also they couldn't have predicted. They that I they know. fucked up during that heist and killed everybody. Right. That didn't have to happen that way, right? right? That wasn't a guaranteed thing. Yeah, I, they didn't know that. Yeah, why? Except for the fact, maybe since Verbal Kent was the guy who murdered the guy with the briefcase at the end, he was going to make sure everyone was he, dead. He was going anyway. to make sure it went south, right? So, right. so again, because that him shooting that guy was kind of out of left field, yeah. and they're like, "Ooh, Verbal, yeah, he can murder." Right. So, so you could think that. This was all coordinated by him because he's inside with the guys. So he's making sure that this path happens, that they they decide to work together, that they bond together. Or he maybe had other reasons. He wanted that guy dead, the jewel guy dead. He wanted the police escort service. There was something about that that he wanted to take care of. It's all just he's just checking off the boxes, you know, in terms of his wish list in order to get them to the and then getting them into the uh, L.A. area so that they can take care of the ship. Um, but I don't know. Seems like an awful so, yeah, lot. So of, then they do that. Anyway, the uh, the failed heist, failed heist, and then they they come back and they're like, uh, "We didn't get what we wanted, right?" There's like there was no uh, money in the deal or whatever. It was right. just drugs. Like, what are we supposed to do with that? Redfoot's like, "I don't give a fuck. Fuck you guys." Huh. Um, so then they're pissed at him. I forget how that ends, but then they're like in a pool hall, and then the lawyer comes and yeah. he's like, "I work for Kaiser Soze, so now you're just going to listen to everything I say. You have to do this boat thing." And they're like, I don't want to do the boat thing. So they go and try to kill Kobayashi. Right. But Kobayashi's like, I got to, you know, I got your Eni Finneran over here. I'm doing lawyer stuff with her. So you better back the fuck off and I'll castrate your nephew, McMenis. Right. Which, that, which was also, odd, that was an odd exchange, <laughs> wasn't also, it? I might only yeah, castrate like, and I might nephew. castrate his kid. Yes. Huh? But, but he could have been, he, he could have been up front with all those threats too. He didn't need to wait for them to come get him. And what is verbal? What, what, what is Kaiser? So say, does he want this to happen that they're going to attempt, uh, put an attempt on him. Somehow this brings them all closer together. Like, what's the point of that? He got two good. Just knowing that he's serious. Cause I was confused that like, couldn't this lawyer guy get at all of their loved ones anyway? They weren't hiding them, right. but I guess the idea that they had was like, this guy isn't ballsy enough or big enough to get at the people that I like. Right. So it was kind of showing them, Oh, he does. <clears throat> he does have the means to like, get my loved ones to travel. I right. mean, he didn't, he didn't even need to bring her over there. He's like, I know where your, like, your sure. girlfriend lives. I'll kill her. Right. As opposed to like working with her as a lawyer, right? Yeah. I don't, I, it seemed, but also like, yeah, so like Kaiser Sose wanted the, the two bodyguards are dead that were Kobayashi's bodyguard. They're killed. There's a mess mm-hmm. in the elevator. There's, you know, I mean. <laughs> it's you know, quite th- a mess th- in the th- elevator. This is like, yeah. <laughs> He wanted Kaiser says they wanted all that to happen. You assume it, that this is all part of the plan, uh, or or maybe some parts of it he doesn't control. He, he's like, well, well yeah, that he just he adapted. He's like, well, they're going to try to kill you, lawyer guy, yeah. but I'll, I'm there. I'll make I'll sure they don't actually kill you. I'll let you know what their plan is, and yeah. we'll figure it out. Yeah, you got Bobby and Bobby. They're going to die probably, but that's okay. Yeah, we don't like them. Two in. shittiest guys. They're about to get demoted. That's right. Put them on that's the elevator. Right. It's going to be a mess. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> These are the guys we don't like anyway. Let's let's uh, <laughs> let's put them there. 
Um, but yeah. Wouldn't give that scene away for anything, though. I love that. When the lights go out and like it flashes for a second, mm-hmm. it's just like one of the guys looking to the side. Yeah. Very memorable stuff. Uh, so then they go and do the boat heist, and there's no Coke, and everybody dies because Kaiser Soze gets rid of his limp oh. and murders all of his yeah. uh, co-workers there because he just wanted to kill the one guy. That's all he wanted, and he wanted to yeah. kill all of his little friends to you know cover his tracks because his main goal in the movie was to kill one guy that saw him. But at the same time, he left another guy that saw him, and that guy, (laughs) you know, drew a picture of him because he didn't kill all the people on the boat. That's right. You know, I I don't know. When you're whittling it down this this simply, I don't know why you like it. (laughs) Well, the thing is, what? so now that John says that, like, maybe none of this happened, maybe, though, I kind of like this, too, because, you know, it, it pans over a bunch of different crime stories, Maybe everything is false. Maybe they just met at the lineup because I assume they have a record of all five of those guys going into the lineup. Maybe they just met at the lineup and Verbal Kint. Well, if they had Verbal Kint in the lineup, the police had to have had an alternate. Uh, like he he must have had a social security number. This Verbal Kint. He must have mm. been like on the grid. Yeah. Right. How long has he been this Verbal Kint? Because well, he's, he's in the system. He's faked as you know Kaiser Sose can do anything. Or he's. We've got a fake so idea. what was the point of Kaiser Soze becoming verbal kint? Was it to eventually, when there's a witness, that he'll have a throwaway persona that he can get away because he's going to get caught? No. Why not just kill the guy and run away? Why plan on getting caught by the cops and spending years building this fake persona of a, a guy with uh, palsy? Right. Like a, you know, what... Now I'm starting to be no regret ever that's, trying to question it. I, I told you. Now, now, <laughs> yeah, I got there. I, I just no needed to get there, John. That's all. Right. Now I got there. Okay. 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 Gotcha. Yeah. It's stupid. Okay. No, good. but it, it, yeah, it's, it's still, it, it's okay. Movie. It's still entertaining. It's fun. It, it's very yeah. entertaining. It's an entertaining um, movie that doesn't need to be dissected. I, I, yes. Yeah, so, but it's simple enough where you can follow it on the first right, watch right. and have fun with the ending and not, even after rewatching it, it still isn't so dumb that you can't just spend 10 minutes breaking it apart to realize it is, but it takes that long, mm-hmm. and most people won't do that, yep. and that's great. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. All right. You guys want some trivia? Wait, so two things about sure. the beginning of the film. Oh, here. sorry. Yeah, One, go back. I did not know, and I'm pretty sure this is what happened, is he pees on the gasoline fire and yeah. puts it out. Right. Yeah, it shows him shaking it afterwards. Really weird. It's like, if you think about it. Why is like, that weird? I don't know. Do you ever pee on a gasoline fire and then like from a, a like he's one stair flight to a stair flight full it's kaiser soze john he's saying that he, it's kaiser soze. That he, couldn't, he couldn't hit the bullseye I mean, that like, it's, kaiser it's kaiser soze, soze. It's kaiser soze. come on <laughs> yeah. okay fine get it the guy's get got a piss on a dime control. from five flights right. of stairs away that, man, that guy's yeah. got a huge bladder that's right you know <laughs> anyway it just I, it, it was not a stylish thing to do um, but I never noticed that he, that's what happened. Like I, I'd seen it a couple of times. I think I never really put that together that that's what was going on in the beginning. Um, did they, um, don't know how you missed it. It's like the first know, two minutes of the know, movie it's and strange. it's pretty obvious. I know, I know, but it's just weird. It just doesn't fit the rest of the style of film. I didn't think, I guess. Um, but, um, did they, yeah, it does. Is yeah, it, really? it totally does. 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 Yeah. yeah. I, I think it, I think does. it totally does. does. It's as, it's as outlandish as kind of being like in the a, movie. A real stylish know? guy. Like, Baldwin or somebody peeing on the gasoline fire. Did you see his haircut when he killed his family? He's not a stylish That's true. guy. You're right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. He's like Fabio. He's like some kind of like romantic yeah. novel cover guy. Um, so uh, did they did they like uh, add in the narration and everything after on the fr- on the beginning? Because it really feels like it wasn't. It's very strange the way it sets it up. Because you get narration before you know that verbal is there talking, where verbal's at, where the narration's coming from. It almost seems like they put it in no, afterwards. It it's, to me, it starts with. It, it's no, it starts. It shows him in the deposition room for like a two seconds. Does it? It's a weird shot, but some it, it's some like some he's I, brightly lit, and the it seems very eighty yard. But he is being interviewed by like the people that give him immunity. It's right in the beginning. I must I must have missed it during the beginning because I, I I missed that first shot and was confused for a bit about who was talking. Yeah, so, it's not a great shot. Yeah, it's very very washed out lit. Like they yeah. overlight him, but I think they were going for like an interrogation room vibe for it. But uh, anyway, yeah. also um, and, the, and the ADR is not great because what they did in this movie is sometimes the the footage take 
was good and the audio was bad and vice versa. So they would mix and match the video and the audio. Mm. And the actors were pretty good at doing things like exactly the same way. So mm. for the most part, it lines up really good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That one was just an example of it not necessarily. The one that didn't up. necessarily work. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, you can't really tell otherwise. Hmm. No, I mean, good. I was, I wasn't, you know, I remember that moment and I remember being like, that was off, but not then moved right along. Yeah. You know, it wasn't that egregious. Someone was sleeping this day. Yeah. This weird set that they built for this two second long shot. I'll accept it and move on. That's fine. Yeah. Um, Any other questions there, John? Chaz giving a performance very similar to another favored actor. Um, Let's see if you can... Our favorite actor? One one of ours. Buffalo? Yeah, he's very Buffaloian, it seemed. (laughs) Buffaloian. (laughs) Buffalonian. (laughs) Buffalish. Yeah, don't you think so? I thought he was very... I could could see Buffalo doing this, just that kind of like, what? (laughs) Kind of thing, you know, just that sort of like, (laughs) kind of manly but whiny. Yeah, sort of. I thought um, he was one of the better actors. Yeah. He, the Chaz guy, yeah. the the agent. You know who that guy is, DC? No. He's got interviewing Verbal Kent oh, in the police office. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I've seen him in like normal TV. Oh, he's and, been yeah, in lots like of stuff. And, yeah. He was the hardest person to get yeah. in this movie. They they uh Man. so Kevin Spacey was a nobody, but he was pushing the project and they needed people who were famous. And this Chaz guy was in a bunch of stuff and they wanted him number one and they tried to get a bunch of other people because he was Chaz was super busy. They actually had Al Pacino read the script, but he was busy. Uh, he was, I think he was filming Serpico instead of this one. But he said he already played a cop in heat and didn't want to play. Another oh, is cop. that why? Or in, in okay. Wikipedia, it says that. And then he, it's the, yeah, he had just played the a one cop role. He regrets. Yeah. I mean, yeah. No, he doesn't regret that. He made so much money, but um, yeah. well, no, there was he, a week he, of time yeah. where he, he regrets that Chaz, doing oh, this. Oh, gotcha. He doesn't regret the facelift, though. He's still okay with the facelift back <laughs> right before sure. he came out. <laughs> you know what it is? Yeah. Uh, but Chaz opened up for a week, and they jumped on it, and uh, that actually helped the the financers. This is an independent movie, but they did have you know financers. Um, mm. They they Chaz's uh, lining up with this project lent lent it to being made because like they were like, all right, that's a big enough name for us. Yep, um, that's cool. And Gabriel Byrne was another one, and he was having some personal problems at the time. Uh, and he didn't like the script either when he read it. He's like, I don't think it makes any sense. I don't think he can pull this off. But after meeting with Brian Singer and Christopher McQuarrie, those two dudes had so much positive energy and he saw like them having a vision for it. He's like, okay, this could be pretty good. And they got him out of his like acting rut to mm-hmm. be in this. Um, so those two guys got the financing, but, uh, Chaz only had a week and they filmed all the, uh, you know, the exposition inside that one police room stuff, which is like a third of the movie, maybe mm-hmm. overall. In five days. Wow. Holy shit. Wow. Which is pretty good. Yeah. That is pretty good. It's a lot of shooting. Yeah. And it was pretty tough. Some days were really hard. The most infamous day on set was the uh, the day slash night they filmed that garage scene where the uh, the jewelry heist went bad. That was one day. It was 19 hours long. Uh, All of the actors and crew started complaining like halfway through that period of time. And they actually had like the, what they said was like the bond managers coming to shut down the production, like the people in control of the money, yeah. because people were calling wow. them being like, this is illegal. Like you can't fucking do this. But Brian Singer is like, we don't have the time. We need to get this done today. Um, the, the, the gun they had that time was like a red pellet and no one trusted it. So Brian Singer had to get shot in the head with the pellet and show that it didn't hurt like that much. Um, so then, then they used that, uh, hmm. what else? A wacko. Yeah. 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 Uh, Yeah, so 19 hours. There might be another piece of trivia, but what happened at the end of that was uh, Chris Farley showed up on set. (laughs) Chris Farley. Nice. Pretty weird. And Brian Singer had red paint all over his forehead, and Chris Farley was hanging out with everyone. They were all upset and stuff. Uh, Pretty weird. Wow. (laughs) Doing cocaine, (laughs) probably. probably. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Right. I wanted to bring up two inconsistencies with his character. There's, uh, you know, Verbal Kent. He's the man with the plan. That's how he's introduced, right? He's like the mastermind. But then, even though knowing all of this, uh, Agent Coulion, at at one point, he's like, because you're a cripple, Verbal, because you're stupid. And he's like, he's not stupid. He's the man with the plan. Wait a minute. Is he stupid or is he the mastermind behind the plan? I don't know. I don't get it. He's just shaking him down, trying to make him feel weak and and, uh, like friendless and get him to sort of spill his guts. So it's just an interrogation technique, too. 
No, I'm smarter, smarter than, than you. But verbal, smarter than you. Verbal's the one who says he's dumb because yeah. he's like, "Why did Dean Keaton? Why does he like you?" Yeah. And he's like, "Because I'm dumb." And he's like, "No, it's because, and it's right. also be- not because he's your friend, uh, even though that one makes you cry." Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> I don't think that makes so sense. Plus, ridiculous. also, there's a part where he's talking about like turning state at the end, mm. um, trying to like, "I'll protect you." And and verbal turns and goes, "I'm not a rat." And you're like, "Yes, yeah. you are. You just but ratted you twice in one day. That's what this <laughs> you, entire movie is. Is you ratted? What are you it's talking you about? Yeah. yeah. Well, they're all dead, though. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Man, yeah, good point. You just fixed it, John. Thanks. Yeah. If they were alive. No, they you never wouldn't existed. Be nah, you wouldn't, you know. They never existed. Yeah, that's true. They, they existed because they were in the lineup. They had to have existed. Uh huh. I have to assume the lineup was real because they could have checked that, right? He's got to flip you. He's got to flip you. <laughs> He's so good. <laughs> flip you. Flip you for real. <laughs> is what the fuck is he saying? <laughs> what? <laughs> I wish they didn't kill his character. He I could know. Have saved the I would love. Movie. Yeah, exactly. I had more from him. He was great. I wanted to see. But that is so. To expand on what you said, John, the the reason he was that crazy is because the way he read the script is that since he was the one who died, he was the only reason he was there was a lesson to the other four to prove right. that Kaiser that's Sose a, was real and could point, get to right? him. That's a, right. That was, so none yeah. of the dialogue, his justification was, none of the dialogue before then meant anything mm. because he's just there to be dead and to scare the rest of them. So he talked to Brian Singer about it. He's like, since that's the case, nothing I say matters. So I'm just going to go like off the wall, if that's okay with you. I'm going to create <laughs> a character. If you don't like it, we can create another character. And Brian Singer, this is like a second movie, and he's like, Sure, sure, that sounds good. And then he comes in with this this guy, this fenster, and he does it. And Brian Singer is like on record saying, uh, he's like, I don't know if it was a joke. And if it was a joke, I didn't know if I thought it was funny <laughs> or if I thought it was like terrible and I was afraid. That I didn't know what was, I don't know what to make of it. Wow. And then uh, when Benicio was done, he's like, what do you think about that? And he like expressed some confidence that it wasn't a joke, that this is actually his intent. And he wanted to trust the actor. So he was just like, that's great. Yeah, that's great. Let's do it. Yep. And it, so Benicio del Toro probably was happens. not a big deal at all then. Collaboration, right? not at all. Right, right. Nope. So, yeah. And this movie was huge for him. Yeah. Um, and he didn't even have a uh, a tryout because like they brought him in and they liked his look and they liked some of the other small roles that he had done. And they were like, "Hey, you want to come in for a tryout?" And he's like, "I don't, I don't like tryouts. I don't want to do that." And they're just like, "Well, how about you just like come in and, and do a character and see if it works?" And he's like, "Okay, yeah, I'll do that." <laughs> so no tryout for him. Wow. Freaking weird, dude. I mean, there's, there's no rules in how any of these things get made. No, I know. And that's what's so awful about working in the industry. Yeah. There's no it's similarities, it seems like. Yeah. yeah. And if there are, the people I think I feel actively try to make them it's different every time. So it's, oh, it's all so different. It's so, so hard. And everyone's like, shut the fuck and up. And even if you, know? you, like, it's weird because your success comes after you're working. So, like, when this movie comes out, Everyone is unemployed at the time, right? So, like, that's fucking weird, too. You get to go to the screenings and you see, like, if you get a percentage, then that's good. But, like, you're not working, most likely, at the right. time. Yeah. It's, it's weird. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, did you guys notice Gus Fring? Do you know who Gus Fring is? Mm. No. Do you Have you seen Breaking Bad? Yeah. Oh, is that the? Is this the? Is the chicken guy the main? Yeah. The the main detective? Yeah, the main yeah, detective, yeah. FBI guy. Yep, right. that's Gus Fring, yes. Chicken Man from Breaking Bad. Yep, yep, that makes sense. Yeah, I did. I did so, recognize him. I was reading an interview where he was basically this could be made up, but what he was saying was he has a life insurance policy, and his acting career was going so bad before he got cast in Breaking Bad, he was considering killing himself to get get his kids money. To like, but give, you don't get the money that way. Well, he was going to f- set it up. Oh. So it was an accident. He wasn't going to like shoot himself in the head. He was going to like pretend like it was an accident so they could collect. So that's where hey, he yeah, was at. Yeah, joy in Hollywood. <laughs> you'll you'll have a great time. Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, you might starve. You may not figure out anything in your long term life. And uh, hey, you know, you'll be broke. By hey, but time now he's 40. doing great. He's just doing great. <laughs> I know. I mean, you got to have balls, I guess. Uh, you got to uh, guts. Let me rephrase. And you got to have guts, I, I guess, and, luck. and be in the right place at the right time. That's mm-hmm. right. And also be somewhat attractive, uh-huh. have some charisma. You know, I mean, there's a lot that goes to it, you yep. know, like uh, being born for some people. Um, not not having any know. verbal tics, not stuttering ever, not saying, um, not doing any of that stuff that most people do. You need to be able to just say the words, say them slow enough 
where people can understand them, but not too slow where they're bored. You know, there's like Benny, a whole bunch I of would, shit. I would just love to watch your face as you see some of these actors. I don't want to. Kind it sounds embarrassing. Like <laughs> yeah, it's awful. I mean, there's no way. You, you, I mean, the best of the best can do that, but like, <laughs> well, good yeah. luck. That's why a lot of those people don't. Them. That's what I'm saying. You need that I to know, be like a good actor. It's really fucking but hard even to still, have that. You'd be surprised how many of the good ones also don't have that. <laughs> Oh, really? Okay. Think about, yeah, well, think about the stories we've heard about, like, some of the older actors that, like, you know, didn't make any sense half the time and you had to cut it together. Just but there's to still, even if you there. watch Brando, he still talks, like, confidently and clearly. He doesn't say, I just but said he, like, and I say I'm a lot, I stutter a lot, you know, like, we oh, all well, have I little verbal I think it's much things. easier, though, too, if you've, if you're, you know, got some sort of script to work off of, you know exactly what you have to say, and then you fuck around with the rest. Well, I'm saying even just listening to Brando speak, like a lot of them, when they're being interviewed, oh, and a lot I of them see. can go on like SNL, they can pretty flawlessly, well, is, for the most yeah. part, do that type of work, yeah, too, yeah. where it's just like hosting and talking and just being confident and just rolling through yeah. the mistakes and just having like all that type of talent. Being okay on stage, really, is Yeah, no, that rare. that is true. The theater kids, you yeah. know, are, are typically the Some people love that. it, but you don't want to seem giddy about it either. You don't want to seem like you like it. You want to seem like you could do without it, mm -hmm. right? You want to seem cool about the whole thing. You kind of yeah, need that. Yeah, but I mean, put it this way. We're not I think too for cool every because then those, you're freaking Billy Baldwin, right? <laughs> He's way too cool. For every one of those, there's another one that has only the editor to thank for their work. Yeah. So. Got to be friend the editors. You know. They can, they can That's when you're not out. making millions, you know, you're probably on Blue Bloods. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Shitty TV. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, still making good money, though. Yeah. Uh, so, two commentary tracks, and believe it or not, guys, I got to listen to them both. Oh, congratulations. Oh, God. The first Why? one. Why? Because I, what are you talking about? What? What do you think we're doing here, TC? This is a, this is a glorified justification, <laughs> so I, I can watch tired, commentary John. tracks. I'm on your oh, camp yay. now. I'm tired, Welcome. and I am just I don't care. We're getting okay. old. Welcome to old guy this, land. Uh, the real point yeah. of this podcast is to watch three dudes who used to be young just and full age. of spunk just age and get tired. Yeah. That's basically all this <laughs> exactly is. Exactly all you're gonna find. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, when we're 90, we'll be listening back, being like, man, I had energy. Yeah. The episodes are going to be five minutes long and be like, hey, what'd you think? Oh, it was okay. Uh, yeah, it was okay. It was All right, talk right. to you guys. I got to pee now. <laughs> <laughs> John, what you got to do is you got to get one of these catheters, buddy. Yeah, I'm telling you, the yeah, catheters are yeah, where it's yeah, at. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Be like you two hours later, yeah. we haven't even talked about the movie. Just we'll be completely Advertising lost. catheters. Yeah, right. <laughs> yep. All right, so the first commentary tracks with Brian Singer and Christopher McQuarrie, and the second one was with, apologies, I didn't get his name, but he was the uh, editor and composer, which is a pretty odd credit, dual yep. credit, but... Yeah, yeah that's, awesome. I mean, I really like that. That's an awesome... You think it would make sense, but also both it's, it's are very usual. hard so, in their own respects, yeah. right? John right. Ottman. Yeah. John Ockman. O yeah, you have to be some kind of crazy talent to be able to do both. O-T-T-M-A-N. Has he done a lot of other stuff? Superman Returns, Valkyrie, Jack the Giant Slayer, and the X-Men. So he's following Singer around, basically. Yeah. So is he out of work now? Does he have anything coming up? Uh, let's see. Did he get Me Too, too? He might Don't have. tell me he got Me well, Too, too. His last, well, on Wikipedia, the last thing we have here is from 2016, like X-Men Apocalypse. He did The Nice Guy, um, composed that was, that was some of the music. The Nice Guys? Yeah. That's a good one. Um, so if you read online, they say that the usual suspects came from a Casablanca quote where someone says, line up the usual oh, suspects no. or something like that. But according to Brian Singer and Christopher McQuarrie, I got to write IMDB for this incorrect thing. They say it was from an article that they were reading around the time. And they thought that the idea of usual suspects of bringing in the same round of criminals was just a fun idea. So it was from an article, not from Casablanca, according to the writer and director of the movie. So I feel like you got to trust that. Oh wow! Over anything? Yeah, I would trust that over anything else. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was, so then they had this idea, and then their first. So they came up with the idea of being fun, and then then they came up with the poster of the five guys in the lineup. Um, so then that was like the you know what are we going to do with these five guys? And uh, Christopher McQuarrie had a scene written that he hadn't used yet from different ideas, and that was the opening sequence of the movie. So the opening sequence of someone being shot, a mystery guy coming and killing him, the boat blowing up, that whole sequence that they show at the beginning and end was already written. They shoved it into this movie and they kind of knew it was going to be the end. They were going to start with it and the movie was going to be 
how do we get here? And then it's going to show you how they got there, and then they're going to show it again at the end. Nice. So the whole uh, plot of the movie was they it was a good guardrail for their writing because they knew where they needed to get. So if they ever felt like they were getting lost, they could just look back and be like, all right, we need to get back to this point. Mm -hmm. And then they would get them like back on track. So maybe that's why there's a bunch of like meandering stories. And then all of a sudden it just comes back to the end because that's what Mm -hmm. they needed to do because they were getting off track as they were doing stuff. Um, Yeah. To try to be fair to IMDb, at least like they they were uh, singer was read a column in spy magazine called the usual suspects. It was that title of the, from the magazine article was titled after the line in Casablanca. It's like one degree of separation uh, there. Huh. Okay. I can see why that could be confusing. Um, <clears throat> the interrogation scene was pretty improv. They were shooting it all morning and it was pretty straight. Like they all did it straight and serious. Um, and it wasn't working that well. But then they all went out to a lunch and they didn't say what they did at lunch, but I think yeah. they got a little silly. Uh, a little and they tipsy. came a little tipsy and they started goofing uh. around uh, during the, the afternoon shoot. And Brian Singer was actually pretty pissed off and he yelled at them a few times to like, <laughs> to get We it, don't have a know, lot of money. We don't have a lot of time. This yeah. Is, yeah, right. right. But then once they had all this goofy footage, the editor, the same editor, put together like the outtake footage basically and created the scene from that. He got it to cut together pretty good mm. of them just like goofing around. And oh. that's great that they did that because that scene is one of the better scenes in the movie. It's extremely memorable. It's very funny. And it gives you like a good idea of all the characters and what mm. they're all about. Um, mm. TC would disagree with that. I mean, Maybe. I, I'm checked out at this point. Oh, so you, <laughs> you look pretty beat, man. Uh, yeah, I'm tired. Christopher McQuarrie <laughs> was a uh, he was an interrogation officer. Um, was the so he was the interrogation officer in the movie when uh, they were interrogating all the guys after interrogating. They got caught. Yeah, the scene where they're like say, wait, trying wait, to wait. break them down. Is it interrogating? Is what interrogating. 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 I'm, I'm also tired. Yeah, we're just all tired. There's not there's no over. energy left in this room. I'm trying <laughs> exactly. Okay. Uh, <laughs> now I can't even think of how the word is actually supposed to be said. <laughs> interrogating. This is the interrogation. interrogating. Stop interrogating uh, me. So he was the one questioning them. Yes, and there you uh, go. he had trouble with Benicio, Benicio del Toro's and uh, Kevin Pollock's improv because they were both improving so much. Um, I don't know why I wrote that down because I got nothing else besides that. Okay. Struggled over that and didn't even have anything good. Uh, Nobody could understand Benicio on set. After a few days of him talking like that, a bunch of the actors were like, we don't understand what he's saying. And they got direction from Brian saying, it's fine. Roll with it. Mm. If you don't understand it, your character doesn't understand it. And then you can react as if they don't understand it. So Mm. so everyone was on board with that. Um, Cinematographer was the one that suggested keeping the blinds open in that uh, main interior. I guess it's the uh, interview room with. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Let's just never say so that, the word again. <laughs> <laughs> it's off the list now. I don't know what it means. <laughs> just live brain losing words. Uh, but they they kept the shades open and they didn't write it that way because I thought it would be expensive and hard to coordinate with editing and all that mm. stuff. But the cinematographer was like, I can do it. And just him even mentioning that, you can see that having those shades open really gives you a sense that they're in an actual space. If those shades were closed, it would be pretty claustrophobic, I think, since you spend Mm. so much time in that room. Um, They filmed in real prisons, in real hospitals, and they filmed at City Hall. So all those were pretty tough. Uh, The prison, especially because they were prisoners outside of the rooms that they were filming in. Mm. So they felt weird, like, being in an actual prison. Um, the verbal Kent role was written for Spacey, and they got him pretty early on, which was good. Um, they didn't want Kevin Spacey to have to physically think about how he was going to keep his hand. Um, he tried a bunch of ways to like show, this is how I'm planning on doing this, but uh, none of it looked natural because he had to focus too much on keeping his hand sure. in the same position, yeah. so they just glued his hand ah. together in that position. Oh, that wow. Sense. So it was I mean, that makes, that's a quick, quick one. Yeah, right? and they glued it with like super glue. Oh my and god! And getting it off at the end was difficult, and he lost some skin. But that's that's a glued hand right there. Wow, wow! I don't Simple. know. I don't know it how works. he did the foot. The, the foot looks hard. That's that's like my knee doesn't work that way. That they didn't show too much of the foot. 
you could tell. They yeah. showed a bunch of the hands. Right, just once but or the twice. Foot they, <clears throat> yeah, the foot they specifically didn't show yeah. very much. Um, so 35 days shoot, and they made it. Uh, they made the shoot schedule. 33 days in L.A., two days in New York. Um, McQueary was a jeweler's bodyguard for his previous job. So that's oh, where he came up with that nice. idea of like robbing oh, the... Oh, interesting. Because uh, when he was that bodyguard, he's like, someone's going to kill me once. and steal these jewels. Yeah. <laughs> right, like, someone, exactly. This is why I'm here, because someone's going to try to steal these jewels, I am afraid. Yeah, right. it's a quite long, drawn-out right. sequence. Give me, give me the case. Nuh-uh. Give me the case. Nuh-uh. <laughs> Just, Do you see my gun? I have a gun. Do you see it? Nuh-uh. I'm pointing it at you. Nuh-uh. You give me the case. Nuh-uh. Why aren't you listening to me? <laughs> You're being really stubborn. <laughs> Give it here. <laughs> Roll down the window. Why aren't you listening to me? <laughs> um, oh, and also during that 19 day, 19 hour garage high scene, the uh, the location manager quit in the middle of it. Ooh. So not only were the financial people on their way to shut it down, the location manager quit. And then oh, man. Chris Farley showed up, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's it just a, a, it's a chaotic it set, party. Yeah. put it that way. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> the MPAA gave the, the, the gave the movie an R. They were worried because there is the scene where they kill children willingly oh, in the movie. Yep. So they were worried about like an X or something like that. Uh, so they sent it in and the MPAA gave it an R. So everyone was, everyone was mm-hmm. relieved. And then the MPAA also gave him a nice note saying, uh, they uh, they like the movie. Oh, we we liked your movie. Good <laughs> job, boys. Isn't that nice? Isn't that weird? Yes, Friggin it is weird. Censors being like, "Good job, boys." Well, they probably enjoyed the plot twists. Um, they could have been a lot. How, they, how often they, do you think they do? They could have been a they lot. They give like thumbs well, up. They could have been a lot more graphic Not with often. the violence too. They 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 really cut away a fair amount of the time as far as the violence goes. Like you. you I think more often than not, you're seeing the, the you're hearing the shots or seeing the flash. And you're not seeing like the the actual like killing. Maybe they also approved of that in a sense, but you know. I saw a lot of killing. I don't know what movie you watched, John. I know, I'm having a hard time like, following you. Really? There's a lot of blood, a lot of headshots. Yes, yeah. There's a lot of dead bodies all over the place. Uh, I guess so. I don't know. It's, you know it's, <laughs> Remember uh, maybe, the elevator? Maybe half and half. <laughs> half and half. You don't see the shot happen so much. You just see the aftermath. I don't know. I'm going to disagree. Oh, disagree. Right okay, here. fine. I just, <laughs> like when Kaiser so say, you just see the flashing of the gun. When he shoots, like you, you like go That's to true. exterior shots. There's like that happens like three or four times. There, there's That's like true. exterior shots. So they could have shown those, and they didn't. Maybe they just you mm-hmm. know MPA. Okay, okay. okay. I agree with you now. Okay, I'm bye. switching my position. Thank you. <clears throat> For the TV edit, when they're doing the uh, "Give me the keys," you you know they say in TV, "Give me the keys, you fairy godmother." <laughs> they and they knew really? they wanted a TV edit, so they got the actors to dub it. So if you watch oh, it on TV, it's the actual actors saying that. You fairy godmother. Fairy Godmother. Pretty good stuff. That was good. Uh, that Solid. cave where Fenster is dead is a real cave, and it's in Malibu, PC. Go look for a cave. You might find that okay. cave. Uh, and they used okay. to film a lot of Star Trek episodes there, too, uh, yeah. in that cave. That's where the away team goes. The away team? Yeah, the people that beam down from the ship. That's when you go to oh, the other uh, planet. Is that what know, they call them? The I've never team. seen Star Trek. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Uh, the boat explosion was real. Somebody gave him the boat for cheap. In the script, it was written for to be a much smaller boat. So that all that stuff of them exploring the boat was to justify how big the boat was. They really just planned on like hopping on, looking in the cabin, and running away. And also, but did, the boat they uh, got was so big. They're like, we need to add more to the script to justify the search because they're not going to look at this boat. <clears throat> We're going to hop on top of it and go. There's no coke here. That's not going to work. <laughs> There's no coke. <laughs> so they blew the bo- boat up, and they weren't expecting the boat. To be that big again. So there were seats in the inside that blew 400 feet up into the air and landed close to people on the casting crew. Almost killed people with that wow. boat explosion. They just didn't think about it, put dynamite in a random spot in a boat they knew nothing about, and just fucking blew the shit out of it and stood kind of close. That sounds like a good nice. idea. Hmm. Uh, Billy Baldwin did all of his own stunts. The most impressed that they that uh, these two guys were where uh, the scene where he comes out of the uh, the porthole or whatever it is with a knife in his neck and falls on his face, oh. there was no padding there. Oh. That was a metal floor. Ooh, really? And he, he did it five or six times, ah. and he committed it every ah, single that time. That must have hurt like a Jesus. bitch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he did it once, and it must have hurt a lot, and then he did it five Why more times just as hard. Why can't you have a padding floor? You just 
Because they showed the floor. Oh, they they wanted a good shot, little, John. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, you got to commit. I mean, he's he, a great actor, TC. Yeah, it's yeah. great acting right there. He cl- he's climbing ropes. He's falling on his face. Yep. It's, it's good an stuff. oaf. <laughs> I can't disagree. <laughs> like, so we have, we have some interesting drama going on behind the scenes, according to Wikipedia, that it, after the sexual misconduct allegations against Spacey, Burns said that at one point during shooting, production was shut down for two days because Spacey made unwanted sexual advances, advances toward a younger actor. And Singer, who has been accused himself of sexual misconduct against minors, denied Spacey behaved inappropriately. But later, Kevin Pollack, in a 2018 episode of his podcast, told another version of the story involving Spacey engaging in sexual acts with Singer's young French boyfriend with only several days left in production and that that disrupted filming and led to a souring of their relationship between Singer and Spacey. Which is weird because they both got accused of basically the same thing at the same time and their excuse was the same where they used the I'm gay and that's why you're attacking me defense. Uh Remember that? I remember that happening with Spacey, but that's what Brian Singer also did. And the fact that he did that was the main, it was the first domino to fall. So he was like getting nominated for awards that year it came out. And the fact that he was trying to hide behind being gay really pissed a lot of people off mm-hmm. that were going to give him the awards. So it wasn't even oh, the allegations wow. that made him mad. It was the combination of so that you're and saying him trying because, to defend himself right, by being gay. Right. You guys are you guys are being homophobic. That's why you're making these sorts of uh, accusations. Yeah. And, and yeah. they're like, nope, you can be gay, that's fine, yes. but you're a rapist. That's what we're pissed yes. off about. Yeah, and the fact that you try to hide rapist. behind that because you think you're right. less accusable if you pull that card is fucked up right. and fuck you. Yeah, so both of them tried yep. to use that. Didn't work out. They're both, you know... They still got millions. Oh yeah, they're, do- you know, they're doing. Spacey fine. was popular for thirty years. He's, he's come. Kevin's in a new film too, um, in in Europe, right? Ah, uh, I think it's in yeah, Europe. Is it all? It's Europe, probably yeah. France. Yeah, TC's nodding. I can see it. TC's nodding. It's in France. Is it? I don't know. I'm not. I'm ready to go to bed. <laughs> too bad, TC. <laughs> now you're in John's shoes. This is what it's like. Eat um, shit, uh, Peter. Peter I, don't have, Peter. I don't have too much more. Peter five eight. Yeah. Uh, so you're saying names and l- numbers now, that, John? What's the, going that's on? That's the next. Uh, yeah, that's an odd title for a film, but it sounds like it's. Oh, is it French. Bible Rebecca, stuff? Oh, that's, Re- Rebecca that's de Mornay. Oh, Peter five eight. Yeah. Uh, is that a Bible thing? Yeah. Sounds. Sounds Christian. Sounds Bible. Sounds like a Bible. Sounds, <laughs> sounds Bibleicious. <laughs> that's the name of the movie. Bibleicious. <laughs> Bibleicious. <laughs> Starring Kevin Spacey. It's a good title. It's a good title. <laughs> I'd watch that. That would get banned in this country. I'd, I'd watch, watch that. Rather, I'd rather watch that. Yeah, Bibleicious. It's just uh, weird. Um, <laughs> the what time is it line is, did you guys have any thoughts about that? Kind of just a random thing to say before you're about to be killed? When? No. I don't even know your, if you know when I'm talking about it. Dean Keaton is shot. Oh, yeah. Uh, Kaiser Soze standing over him. And he's about, he knows he's about to yeah. be killed, and his last words are, what time is it? And then he gets shot. No. Um, the reason that's there is because in an earlier version of the script, they had a time bomb on the boat. And oh. uh, Dean Keaton wanted to know if the bomb was going to go off. Like, are, am I going to kill Kaiser Soze with the time of the bomb? And the whole thing is, like, they, they shot that, and then they just removed it. But his look of disappointment afterward was like, he gets the time. And it's too far away from the bomb exploding, oh, so he okay. knows so that Kaiser sad. Sose has time to get away. Uh, yeah, you know? yeah. No, I just thought it was, it was a random question, and he's sad he's going to die sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. It kind of works, even though yeah. I guess it doesn't make sense, but I still kind of yeah. liked it. Yeah. It's like a random thing to be like, thinking before you're going to die. Lots of the rest of the film, but yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. it fits. Yeah. It's bad, it's, and yeah, it works. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, sure. There's a lot of the, the commentaries are really good because there's a lot of smaller details that I won't get into. But they pointed out cool stuff like the pickup, the amount of pickup shots they got because uh, it was an independent movie and they needed cohesion in scenes a lot of the time. And they would just do it in the backyards. They do it in a parking lot. They would like go out oh, on wow. their own after the production ended and use their own feet. Like the foot with the flame is the director's foot. The hands and like some sh- like insert shots are other people's hands. Kaiser Soze is played by five different people in this movie, actors. And it's wow. just... It's they have a lot of like this like scrapping it together to make it work mentality and the way it's very that indie it is but th- you think with all the insert shots that the cohesion between like the lighting and the color scheme and whatever wouldn't work but it works really fucking well and mm. it's just a guy in his you know backyard making a movie that's going to make hundreds of millions of dollars basically yeah. which yeah, is pretty he cool knows what he's doing apparently this is only yeah. a second movie and the first one nobody even knows what it is. 
So it's basically his first movie. Yeah. But he he's got the production side of it in his head, you know. I mean, he, yeah, he, knows, he knows what, what he's he looking wants. for. Right. Right. But even people who do know what they look what they're looking for, they can't do it, right? It's still hard. Yeah, but usually in LA when you hire people and you have like a crew of any stature, they're going to know what they're doing. But know? if but then when that's the done and you're trying to match the pro stuff with your own camera at your house by yourself and matching that with the pro shit, I mean, like that's I don't know. I mean, in, if there anything, if at all, what they were doing was what is similar, you, all, a lot of that stuff's written down. Like people mm. the settings take and notes stuff. of like settings and what they were using. So they just went to the and books the and they're lenses. like, all right, yeah. use the same lens, That's, use the same light level. Because right. there's so many variables at all times. So a lot of that is recorded and, and, you know, not as much then, but now especially it's all in the camera. All that information's uh, easily accessible as metadata. So that only came into position because people used to do it by hand uh, in logs. You make it sound easy, but we watch the Northman TC and they can still fuck it up pretty bad sometimes. No. Oh, no. It doesn't mean that people do it all the time. It just <laughs> means that there are people out there that log everything so that they can, in fact, do the pickup shots later and have it match as really yeah. close or like you couldn't notice the difference. Um, and, you know, don't forget there's post-production, color correction and all that other stuff. So. Yeah. True. Still impressive. I was impressed. It's good. It and is it's, impressive. It's fun. It's fun I mean, looking at it, being like when it's indie. It's amazing what you can. What it's amazing when you're dealt with constraints. What an independent filmmaker can achieve, and I think that's kind of what's cool mm. about indie, is that you're not you're dealing with a constraint at all times. Which a lot of times the bigger budget ones are too, but still, it's you know it's even more so. It's even more scrappy when it's you know. Yeah, and they. I mean, they no pointed budget. out things like the elevator scene where they they shot in a glass elevator the three guys on the in the elevator, and then it cuts to Billy Baldwin sitting up in the elevator, but he's not actually in an elevator. They found a parking structure somewhere, and he's just sitting in a parking structure. But what they did is they they had like the light going up their bodies on both the shot in the elevator and on Billy Baldwin when he's up there. And the fact that the light is the same, the moving light of the elevator going up floors is the same in both shots, you don't even think about it. It just works. You don't even notice, really, yeah. Yeah. It's pretty sweet. I just thought he was sitting on something up there. I had no clue that it was uh, another Somewhere totally different, right? And like even the fact they must have gone to the elevator and be like, Elevator ceilings aren't this high. You can't sit up on an elevator. There's a freaking ceiling. <laughs> yeah. But in this There's movie, it's like, sit this on is a fucking there. tall elevator. I buy it. <laughs> Billy yeah, Baldwin's sitting right. up there. Of course it's high. Uh, uh, you Why can still see this? his eyeliner. <laughs> 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 he has the uh, Lloyd Christmas haircut in this movie. I thought that was great. Oh, <laughs> you pumpkin pie haircutted freak. You know, <laughs> dumb and dumber. Uh, yep. He didn't know the actors. The director didn't know the actors. No, sorry. The editor didn't know the actors. So he wasn't intimidated about trying to give them enough screen time or worried about what they would think about how he was editing them in the movie. He just tried to make the movie good. I'm not sure how much of a difference that would have made, but he's felt that pressure in other movies since then to like Mm. the director would be like, you need to put more of this guy in it because like he's the star. And he's like, well, it doesn't really serve the movie, but if you say so. Sure. Uh, no, everyone on, on the movie thought it was a glorified student film while they were making it. Mm-hmm. Nobody thought it was going to be like a classic or even be that good. They thought it was pretty wacky and experimental for a lot of it. The director was letting most of the people just run wild with whatever they wanted to do. So they're just like, yeah, this is fun. This will be something weird. And now it's a classic. Pretty weird. Um, I think that's it. That is it. Nice. Top 250. Nice. Mm, tough to say. If you're 13 years old, yes. Yes. Right. Well, yeah, totally that's perfect. True. If you haven't that's exactly seen it before, it. yes. Yes. But yes. Now, if you haven't seen it before, question, sure. If you're 13, yes. Exactly. I think the twist still holds up. I like, do. I if do you hadn't seen this before, yeah. you'll probably still be blown away by I the twist. So. I think so. I agree. I will say, again... It's one of the better endings of uh, most I, I, I films. I think I've because seen. of that, yeah. and a lot of the style is it's it's yeah, it's it's, it's yes. so damn entertaining. It is. It's, it's so unique. fun to watch. It's, it's unique. Yeah. All right, we'll go. Yeah. Yes, what yeah, the fuck? we're going. Yes, yeah. gotta flip it. Flip gotta it. flip it. <laughs> 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 All right. All right. So next week, John had a good suggestion, and it's free streaming a new movie called Late Night with the Devil. Oh yeah, let's do that. Okay, it's uh, two directors. It's the Carnes siblings cameron and colin i don't know if it's brothers or sisters or both or whatever um 
But uh, yeah, it's got this guy that's been in a bunch of movies, David Dast Malchian. Mm-hmm. You've seen mm-hmm. him before. He plays a creep in everything that he's in. He's been in a bunch of stuff, and he's the lead character in this movie. No, this it's is- got great reviews, yeah. and it's on AMC Plus or something. It's free streaming on a couple of different sites, so okay. you can get it for free. Cool. Let's do it. Okay. So let's do it. Thanks, yeah, John. Right. Good rec. Yeah. Well, well, actually, we'll hold our thanking you. Until yeah, after right. You watch see week. if I'm in trouble or not. But yeah. Yeah. Cool. Sweet. All right. All right. Let's do that. Talk one. to you guys. See you later. Later.